Well, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Steve Peterson from GCAC. And with me today is Kevin Gorman, who's the president and founder of a company in Seattle, Washington called Thing Blue, T-H-I-N-G Blue. Kevin, greetings. And uh, tell the audience about uh, Thing Blue and, and what you're doing. Uh, good morning, Steve. And uh, thanks for uh, having us on. The Thing Blue is a, a platform that has two core solutions. One is labor management and the other is data integration for the agricultural industry. And we're, we're basically crop agnostic. Uh, you know, it's just labor and data, right? So we don't really care what, what the end product is per se, though our focus has initially been cannabis and hemp just because of the need. Um, we use the term labor management because it's easily identifiable, but uh, Think Blue technically is really a, a performance management engine uh, performance management being defined as uh, the continuous communication and feedback between manager and employees um, towards set goals and organizational goals and objectives. You look at the industry today, agriculture in general, confronting a lot of different obstacles and it just certainly costs are, are going up um, from a nutrient perspective, uh, you know, to uh, fuel perspective, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, the things that we're focusing in on at Thing Blue is uh, there's a, a difficulty in finding and retaining employees today. Um, agricultural labor costs are, are increasing uh, rather substantially. Then there are a number of inefficiencies in, in production bottlenecks uh, in the industry. And then you tie all that up uh, with uh, a plethora of IoT devices, uh, machinery, and everything else that's collecting data, and they're all having their own dashboards and our own little databases. So what we do is we, we're attacking those issues within the industry, um, looking at the inefficiencies in production and things of this nature. So we designed this platform to create um, and assign work activities uh, to visually track the status of the work uh, and deliver critical data uh, detailing timelines, outcomes and costs uh, bridging face-to-face -face and digital communications, um, basically uniting workers and management uh, for better results, greater productivity, increased profitability across all performance metrics then at that point. We're increasing employee engagement um, with this product because uh, now employees can walk in in the morning and see exactly what they're supposed to get done during the day. Um, and there's more control. They, they are exercising more control and being enabled basically so that increase, uh, increases the satisfaction, if you will, rate, reducing the turnover, but at the same time, providing those performance metrics back to, to management and what's happening on a real-time basis. Yeah, so one, of the, clear, yeah one, of the, one of the things, Kevin, that we were talking about is, is with our GCACs, a Fixie product in Clear ESG, is we're working together, and this is the reason why we elected to partner with Thing Blue and bring them into the equation is, you know, as an industry, we're really looking to how do we provide greater transparency and trust for the consumer. And that's our overarching goal. And certainly with what you developed the Thing Blue, it really helps the grower with their intellectual property, making sure there's consistency in the product that's being delivered. Uh, but specifically, what do you see in terms of the things that you can help uh, the consumer and, and uh, better understand about how their product is being grown? Sure. So... And that again speaks to the heart of uh, why we're working together, right? Or why we uh, identified the, the strengths of each each of us. So uh, when you look at uh, FXC and, and the data that ThingBoo collects, uh, end users can now trace that product back to understand the quality, the origin, um, and then also as an end user, I can then support specific farmers um, that grew it. Um, so whatever the product is, I now have that type of information. It applies anything from CBD to coffee beans. You know, uh, you know, end users, consumers in today's environment, one of the, the major factors is just feeling safe, right? Um, being safe from the bad actors that exist in all, all industries, agriculture included. Um, but it boils down to, okay, uh, so there's two end users, right? So the end one end user is a retailer and their clients. And so what are they looking for? And the other is obviously the end user themselves. And what information would they be interested in, you know, in terms of providing that type of transparency where they look at the product um, and, and can ascertain, okay, yeah, this, 
this is information that makes me feel better and I can see where the product's coming from. So the, the beauty of, of this relationship, um, you know, obviously the blockchain technology that uh, is provided uh, by Global uh, Cannabis and what we're doing is that we, we consolidate that data. We're pulling that data together. Um, we're collecting it. Uh, so what is that data? Um, it could consist of everything from the clone information, the mother plant um, in the cannabis industry, uh, the genetics then at that point in time uh, and, and back tracing that. Um, so you could look at generational data. And again, it depends on retailer and user. What do you, what do you want to see? But this is a type of information that can be uh, available to them. Uh, you know, specific data, you know, from the entire grow to the harvest. Uh, which you know could include uh, data such as uh, nutrient supplied. You know, were pesticides used? Um, when was these plants or this batch uh, trimmed? <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, when was it harvested? Anything associated with growing that plant could be captured and made available. So some retailers, some end users may want this much data, and others want it scaled back a little bit and. That's the beauty of a fixie, right? So once you get the data into the, the system, um, what do you want to see? I yeah, know it's perfect. And, and, and it's an important attribute because I think as an industry, and in fact, as we look forward to the new consumer that's coming into this industry, um, you know, the things that the current consumer really is focusing on is, you know, how safe and effective and consistent it is for my product, right? But I think for the new consumer and, and you and I, uh, or in that uh, age bucket now, we're running into a lot of these people where they're willing to explore the cannabis and hemp uh, world for relief and issues. But what they're really looking for is some validation and verification that the companies and the brands that they're dealing with uh, really are, 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 are clear in terms of what they provide and the consistency that they can provide them to their product. It's almost, we as an industry, we have to get to that pharmaceutical grade mentality where that, that item that you consume is consistent every time and not have a variable. And that's one of the biggest challenges that Kevin and, and myself have seen in this industry since I got involved in 2016 and Kevin about the same time is, is the consistency even from the same mother plan varies so much. So you have this inconsistency of, of plant and genetics combined with the inconsistency of the consumer and the, all the variables of the consumer and how do you, you know, what affects that experience? Is it the, is it the grow? Is it how it's, how it's trimmed? Is it how it's shipped and stored? How does it wind up to the consumer? So with the blockchain, we feel it's an excellent opportunity to understand those variables and really start putting some data science to the, to the data, to the information so we can make better and more articulate uh, suggestions uh, to the consumer and also show the consumer these companies have grown up. They're no longer a teenager in the world of business. Uh, these are adults who are running legit businesses that have a have a great story and communication to uh, uh, to share. Um, so, Kevin, we were talking earlier about things that you could put into the blockchain that would help that experience. And Thing Blue has a wonderful dashboard available uh, for its customers. I mean, so the kind of reports that your system were going to be generated are things that we can attest is the word to the blockchain and basically notarize and document. Uh, specifically, how do you feel you're helping your customers with articulating that nutrients list or the safe pesticides list or any of those at variables that could have a, an impact on the final product? Well, good question, because as you look at uh, just a farm operation today, right? Uh, you're given orders to, to go apply a nutrient as an example. Um, there are different, types uh, of, of the same nutrient name, right? So you, you could end up applying the wrong product, um, even though it has uh, fail safe on it, as an example, um, maybe it was fail safe one versus uh, fail safe two. So uh, ensuring that the, the correct nutrient, you know, by providing that information to the employee is there or a validation that Okay, this is the, the nutrients. It's is being uh, automatically fed. So making sure that uh, the feed is coming from the right tub, if you will, to apply those nutrients. 
And, and it, it just goes even deeper than that. And again, as an employee, if, if I'm getting more done, I'm happier what I'm doing, I'm going to gather more data. So from a grower perspective, if indoor or outdoor, it doesn't really matter. Reducing that employee turnover retains, you know, tribal knowledge. And so that tribal knowledge then carries itself forward, right? Mm -hmm. So as you talk about um, strains and how different, uh, uh, even with the same mother plant, you're getting different variables growing as much as they sometimes use the term exact science is not. Mm -hmm. And even though you're using the same genetics, the outcome can have a variance within certain uh, uh, levels, if you will. So. Um, again, capturing what is happening and when it's happening and then feeding that into a fixie uh, provides that data validation. By the way, this could include the data we're, we're consolidating from IoT devices. So as an example, we've installed at a uh, water management company down in, in Napa Valley that's using it to manage roughly 20 vineyards. And they have a, a variety of uh, soil sensors, temperature sensors, a variety of different vendors and we're pulling all that data together, consolidating that on one dashboard. Uh, so that data now is now available, and could be, and so we're collecting that data as it relates to a typical batch, if you will. Um, so that data is now available that can be included you know, for this growing season for for what's being harvested. So as That's the excellent. end user looks at at this and says, okay, well, um, yeah, the, uh, the lab results came back and they're a little bit different, but I can see them. I now know what they are. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Um, Kevin, as you look forward into this industry, what are some of the trends that you see that Thing Blue, um, you know, is positioned to address now that we've gone through the initial startup and, and initial wave of, of businesses? It's, it's a good question. You know, as you look at uh, the trends uh, that's happening, everything, I should say everything, but a lot of it's data centric, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've been getting phone calls from it's, it's really interesting people. <laughs> One is a, a very, very large uh, car parts manufacturer that provides sensors for indoor grows um, and coming into market with their own product. And uh, but as you look at the trends within the industry, um, AI obviously is mentioned over and over again, uh, robotics uh, in certain areas uh, um, are, is making good headway in, in a number of fronts. Um, IoT devices obviously are, are expanding rapidly. Uh, data analytics, uh, blockchain is a, a big one, especially as it relates to supply chain and, and as we're talking about end user uh, transparency and then cloud computing. But as you look at all of these, um, so like digital twins, uh, we, we have uh, developed a relationship with a company that uh, developed digital twins in the manufacturing uh, mining industry. And they're uh, bringing that into the food processing and agricultural industry. And uh, they approached us and we were now uh, have a gentleman's agreement with them that uh, when they're ready, uh, we're gonna look at tying our systems together um, our data obviously would feed this type of uh, information. Now, digital twins, for those that are not familiar with that term, is, is nothing more than saying, from a farm perspective, I can look at my entire farm, I can look at any given sensor or any other piece of uh, equipment on, on the uh, farm and pull it up and take a look at it. I can see what's happening on my farm digitally. So now I can manage things faster. Yeah, uh, because now I have eyes on everything, but it's right in my hands. Right, Kevin. This very much uh, thing blue sounds very much like a solution. Obviously, multiple state operators would enjoy in terms of managing its IP and its and and certainly its labor and and making sure things get done as they said they should be. How do you feel that thing blue is also positioned uh, both economically and 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 task wise to help the craft growers, which in my opinion, I feel is the next gen of, of cannabis grower opportunities in this space, very much like the beer industry, we're gonna have very much more of the craft industry. And they have a real story to share in that they, they, they don't machine cultivate, they hand craft, right? And hand cultivate. So how does Thing Blue help that kind of an audience as well? Actually something near and dear to my heart. Um, I grew up farming, so I have a, a, a 
great appreciation for the amount of work that goes into that um, and a love for it. I've always uh, enjoyed uh, farming at that point. But um, as it relates to craft growers, Steve, this platform is um, we, we delivered as a managed service provider. So we manage everything. All you need is access to the internet. So it's cloud computing. And everything I've talked about um, is applicable to them. You know, so as, as the craft growers look at collecting their information, how are you doing it today? And I can tell you, the majority that I've talked to is spreadsheets, you know, or home-built databases. So you got data all over the place, which doesn't uh, enable you, doesn't give you the ability to look at um, your information holistically. Mm -hmm. Um, and even craft growers have a workforce, right? I mean, so uh, I've got 15 employees, so how do I manage them? And uh, it was interesting. You know, that, some might be relatives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. We did a couple of betas, uh, and it was interesting, interesting uh, that across the board, the employees that looked at this loved it. Um, because now... You know, being held accountable is one thing, but being able to say, yes, I'm being held accountable because here it is. Here's the proof of what I've done. Uh, but just as importantly for uh, the grower themselves, then, is this information being collected, right? Mm -hmm. So as you look at uh, down the road, trying to replicate or understand uh, what happened, you know, why this went well or this didn't go well, it isn't, it isn't often just apparent that, well, a hurricane came, hurricane came in and wiped everything out, right? We had one craft grower approach us and we, we built this into our system recently. Um, they're comfortable with spreadsheets and we're looking to create templates for a grow season, right? For a batch. Mm -hmm. And I uh, wanted to replicate that or pieces of that every time, but they like being able to do it on their spreadsheets because they could do it very quick. And that's the whole purpose of this type of uh, solution set is to make life easier, right? So we created the ability for them to say, okay, fine. You create the batch in our system to tell us what the what it is, you know, and then select that spreadsheet and we'll download it and automatically create the task for, you for that particular growth cycle for that particular batch. So again, tools like that to help craft growers, uh, you know, do what they're doing, um, more efficiently, if you will. Oh, that's great, Kevin. So, Kevin, tell the audience how they can get a hold of you and find your website. Yeah, we're we're at uh, Thing Blue. Um, as you see my name, <laughs> BLU. <laughs> <laughs> it's BLU.com. So, uh, Thing Blue uh, .com, uh, is our website, and uh, certainly you can reach me at uh, Kevin at Thing .com. Perfect. Well, thank you, Kevin. And, and for the audience uh, today, if you want to learn more information, you can go to our clear, C-L-E-A-R-E-S-G uh, dot app website, and you'll see Kevin and Thing Blue on our featured partners page. Um, so, Kevin, thank you so much for sharing your time with us today. And uh, we look forward to working with you on, on bringing greater transparency, thus trust, to the cannabis and hemp industries. Thanks again. Thank you, Steve. Have a good one. You too.